Pro wrestling is a highly profitable business for its members. Wrestlers can usually forge out a decent living, especially if they are wrestling for places like the WWE or even AEW now. The business has made multiple millionaires and has become an aspirational job because of the financial security it can bring. This means that many can retire after they're done wrestling or they can go from performing inside a ring to the big screens of Hollywood. The Rock, John Cena, and Batista have all made a seamless transition from superstardom in the WWE to the glitzy world of Hollywood. Many wrestlers have even gotten hired by the WWE to become producers. Some of the names include Finley and Jason Jordan. However, despite this possible security, many wrestlers cannot stay in the wrestling business for long, be it pursuing another passion or the wrestling business not being sustainable. There are a whole lot of wrestlers with extremely weird or different professions after ending their WWE careers. This is Wrestling Hub and today we are looking at 10 wrestlers with unexpected jobs after leaving. Mark Mara was an Attitude Era staple from his time with the WWE in the 90s. Mara had started his career on the other side, however, wrestling for WCW for five years from 1991 to 1996, winning the television title for the promotion. Before he began his work with WCW, he was an accomplished boxer, football player, and hockey player from his time in school. He joined the WWE in 1996 and became the IC champion, before leaving the company with his wife and valet Sable in 1999. Mara would retire from wrestling in 2006. He came to mainstream prominence when the Chris Benoit double murder suicide broke. He was very vocal about criticizing WWE's role in his death and the general culture of abusing steroids in the company. He began touring schools in Florida and giving motivational speeches telling kids to stay away from drugs, narrating his own harrowing experience when he was addicted to steroids and recreational drugs. Mero has a motivational book called How to Be the Happiest Person on the Planet and he spends most of his time working with a non-profit champion of choices. JBL was one of the top heels in WWE, leading SmackDown in that role from 2003 to 2005. He had the longest WWE title reign in SmackDown history until AJ Styles broke it in his run from 2017 to 2018. He was also an accomplished tag team wrestler with Farouk, winning the tag team titles on multiple occasions. He retired from wrestling in 2009 but kept coming back to the WWE as a commentator before finally leaving it full time in 2017. JBL can be found on many financial news channels analyzing the stock market considering his proficiency as an investor. He appears on Fox sporadically. He also also published a book on financial management called Have More Money Now. JBL lives in Bermuda, where the local violence started disturbing him. He created his own nonprofit beyond rugby Bermuda and spends most of his time helping the youth steer into a better life using sport as a vehicle for it. Possibly the one with the most notoriety on the list, Diamond Dallas Page was a star for WCW in the 90s. He got into wrestling a bit late, but still left pretty accomplished. DDP won multiple heavyweight titles in WCW, also winning the US title, tag titles, and also the TV title, making him a triple crown champion. DDP also wrestled for the WWE, but his run with the company is marred by the invasion booking nonsense that many former WCW wrestlers faced. He retired full time in 2005, but makes sporadic appearances in wrestling. Dallas created DDP Yoga after he developed a yoga fitness program, initially called Yoga for Regular Guys Workout, or YRG, after recovering from ruptures to his L4 disc and his L5 disc in 1998. With DDP Yoga, Page has been able to do some remarkable things, for example, getting an obese veteran lean enough to be able to run again. He helped nurse Scott Hall and Jake Roberts back to sobriety and good physical health. DDP Yoga has been extremely profitable and a great move by Page for everything it has achieved. While becoming an actor is by no means an unexpected profession for pro wrestlers, it is a little unexpected when you hear that Vladimir Kozlov is an actor now. Debuting in the WWE as a silent Russian monster heel who beats the likes of The Undertaker clean, his push was abandoned and he became a part of a comedy tag team with Santino Morella, which gave some great TV moments. Kozlov was released by the company in 2011 and he retired in 2012. While Kozlov isn't the biggest name in Hollywood by any means, he is actively pursuing a career despite not being the archetype American hero like other wrestlers have been. Kozlov appeared in the second season of the HBO drama drama series The Wire, he was also a stuntman for The Rock's movie Fast and Furious 6 and for John Wick 2. Perhaps his biggest break was acting in the 2017 Chinese blockbuster Wolf Warriors 2. In 2019, he appeared in the Marvel series The Punisher in Season 2. Oh, and he's also super buff now.
Minya might not have been a big star when he was wrestling, but his post-wrestling career has been something you definitely wouldn't expect a wrestler to have. Minya started in his career in 1988 and would make it all the way to WCW in 1992 and would stay with them until 1994. He later joined the WWE in 96, spending the entirety of the Attitude Era as a role player for the company, leaving in 2001. He retired from wrestling in 2006. He is from Clearwater, Florida, and that is where he went back to after his career was over. After meeting the head chef of Cafe Ponte, Midian rekindled his love for cooking and started to study under the chef. He then started working for Sam Pearl Resort, but would later break off and start his own private catering company. Midian himself specializes in fancy presentations using premium ingredients. Inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018, Ivory is considered to be one of the more high-profile women stars that the company has ever had. She began her WWE career in 1999, actually debuting as one of the Godfather's hoes. While she did make it into a proper storyline later, this is an often glossed over fact in her career. She is regarded as one of the best and is a three-time women's champion. Ivory may have had a post-wrestling career which can be considered just as bizarre as Midian being a chef. While she did start off as a landscaper, she eventually started working with shelters that are no-kill and protected stray animal populations. She eventually started her own doggy daycare. She has learned how to train and groom dogs and now helps the business run along with her partner Jessica Ray. Spike Dudley captured the imagination of wrestling fans all across the world with his style of work. He wasn't the typical large and muscular wrestler, but was pretty small and lean with a penchant for taking punishment. The tough SOB that Spike was meant that he would go on to have a successful career in wrestling. His career was launched by Paul Heyman in ECW, but he did later make it into WWE and taking some of the most brutal table spots. He has been unofficially retired from wrestling since 2015. Spike's claim to fame while wrestling was that he was a regular guy. He wasn't what people imagined wrestlers to be, so when he decided to leave the world of wrestling, Spike chose a pretty regular job. He became a financial planner and has been working at Mass Mutual, helping other people plan out their future, including retirement, college, and taxes. He's now just a dude with a regular job and family. That's the most unexpected thing for a wrestler to do. Steve Blackman, like many others on this list, was an Attitude Era star for the WWE. While Blackman suffered early setbacks in his life like dysentery and malaria, he fought through it and got a full-time contract from the WWE in 1997, nine years after they were about to offer him his first contract. He will forever be a part of WWE's highlight reel after his tremendous hardcore title match against Shane McMahon at SummerSlam of 2000. Steve is a legitimate martial arts star, which means he has a lot more functional strength than most wrestlers do. Instead of parlaying those skills into an MMA career, Blackman chose to become a bail bondsman. He has his own company called Blackman Bail Bonds and has multiple videos on YouTube advertising his own services. He operates in and around the Pennsylvania area and is considered to be one of the best bail bondsmen. From a legitimate martial arts badass that chose not to pursue careers in MMA to... Transitioning between MMA and pro wrestling has become far more common. We have seen multiple crossovers between the two sports in the form of Brock Lesnar, Dan Severn, Ken Shamrock, Bobby Lashley, and most recently Jack Swagger. CM Punk tried his hand in MMA with no prior experience and has had two humiliating losses. However, he did manage to get a career that no mainstream wrestler has ever had aside from his failed MMA exploits. Punk left the wrestling business in 2014 after his well-documented fallout with the WWE. Punk did become a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner as well as a commentator for Cage Fury fighting championships championships, but he is also a comic book writer. Punk wrote his first comic while he was still under WWE when he wrote the introduction to a hardcover Avengers comic. He had his first major writing endeavor in comics when he wrote Marvel Comics Thor Annual Number 1. Even though he only partially wrote it, it opened up many doors for him. Punk is currently still writing the ongoing Drax series as a co-writer. He also wrote a one-shot of Marvel's Master of Kung Fu. MMA might not work out, but comics may very well be the future of the wordy punk. I think everyone was waiting for this entry. While wrestlers transitioning into politics is not all that rare, it is still surprising when they manage to pull it off, especially to the level that the big red machine Kane has. Kane wrestled for WWE for over 20 years and won almost everything that he could have. He is a true company man, but now finds himself balancing off and on wrestling commitments with the welfare of the people of Knox County. Kane isn't just a mayor, but he is also an insurer. Kane and his wife own an all-state agency in Knoxville, Tennessee. Even though he is a Republican, Kane's political ideas fall more towards libertarianism. He considers himself to be a Rothbardian, but a in that school of thought when he realized that he will not live long enough to see a stateless society be fulfilled. Kane was elected mayor after defeating Democratic opponent Linda Haney. 
And these were 10 wrestlers with unexpected jobs after leaving. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later in the next video.